So I had no idea I was the 500th dose until Dr. Crawford came to me and said, hey, by the way, you're the 500th dose and, you know, we want to do this cool thing with you. So I'm Sam. I am a therapist. I have SMA type 2. SMA is spinal muscular atrophy, which is a genetic disease that's much like polio. It causes kids to be profoundly weak. And it's curious in that it exists across the range. So there's some babies who get it who won't survive past their first birthday. And there are adults who don't know they have it until much later in life. And there's a whole range of people in between. Growing up with SMA, my situation was not awful. For the most part, not a whole lot of physical pain. But over time, I started losing different abilities. So walking, obviously. Then I would crawl places. Eventually, that was pretty much starting to stop by the time I got my spinal fusion. Once I got my spinal fusion, there was a, a large um, decrease in ability because it was a long process. I was in the hospital for about three months and I had lost a significant amount of muscle, which was not good because I didn't really have any to spare. Prior to her young adult years, we really only had supportive therapies for Samantha. She needed help with breathing. She needed help with feeding. She had a lot of orthopedic needs. She had to have a scoliosis surgery. All of these were things to patch up the damage that was done from having profound weakness. It wasn't until the development of this remarkable therapy that I was able to offer her a real therapy, one that would slow the rate of degeneration from that point forward. So Spinraza was, is the trade name for a, a generic name called uh, Nusinersen, and it causes a change in the way the genes are expressed and allows for a broken gene to work perfectly. And so from that point forward, when you administer it, you change the course of the disease. And so babies that used to die, now when we give the, the, the therapy in the first week or two of life, they don't even know they have the disease. So we've now given over 500 doses, and there's so many people involved that have made this great. Becky Kornakia, the SMA program coordinator, Ted Alban, our administrator, and so many nurses, nursing assistants, all the helpers that make sure that we have the equipment that we need, that the rooms are available, and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. You know, one of the other extraordinary things about Spinraza is how much it costs but Hopkins did a magnificent job of figuring out ways to be able to work our way around those constraints. Rodonna Miller, the president of the Johns Hopkins Hospital, was instrumental in saying, we have to figure out a way to solve this, despite this challenge. That process took quite a while, but we met the challenge of how to give this drug in all of its complexities, the, the technical challenges of giving it in with radiology or special anesthesia and the financial issues, which were substantial. Hopkins is one of the few places that was able to address all of these needs together in one place and met this exceptional challenge. I can breathe a little bit easier just knowing that I'm not going to progress the way that I have always been told that I am. I can actually like plan things for the future and not just, you know, think that, okay, well, at some point this is going to be it. I'm going to, it's going to be done. <laughs> and I think everybody has a struggle. Mine is just visual. You can see it but everybody is at something they're struggling with, so they're not letting it get to them, so why should I let mine get to me?